Welcome back. Now let's take a look at what is COVID-5, also known as COVID-2019. So the short abbreviation for what COVID stands for is Control Objectives for IT. Since IT management in general, right, is encompassed by best practices frameworks. And these frameworks basically offer different philosophies and tangible paths forward to improve the cost and resource management, allows you to measure risk, speed up customer service, and innovate analysis through predictive methods. So COVID is basically is one such best practice framework. But its scope is unique from most other frameworks in that it focuses narrowly on security, risk, management, and governance. So if you're really looking to streamline business processes and synchronize IT with your business outcomes or business needs, then COVID is really what you're looking for is to alter the IT infrastructure or manage the multi-cloud. COVID is not really what it's all about, okay? COVID is deal with basically security related areas. So with most companies relying on IT for business success, sometimes the IT itself is a product for most enterprise organizations. So COVID here is essential to developing, controlling, and maintaining risk and security for enterprises around the globe, regardless of the actual industry. So once again, it's short for control objectives for information and related technologies. COVID is, was first developed to guide the IT governance and management. And its latest iteration is COVID 2019, which has different parts of its framework while offering much needed updates and accounts for ever present cybersecurity threats and the incorporation of agile and DevOps practice. Next, let's take a look at the COVID structure itself. So from the top level or the highest level, COVID simply creates a three level structure which comprises of three segments. The first is business requirements, second is IT resources, and third are the IT processes. So basically the business requirements, also the information criteria, if you will, includes metrics such as integrity, effectiveness, availability, efficiency, compliance, confidentiality, and reliability. So these are the areas that fall within the business requirements set. The IT resources, pretty straightforward, includes the IT infrastructure, the software applications, for example, the information itself, data, and then people. And finally, the IT processes comprise or divided into domain processes. And I'm going to explain the IT processes in the next couple of slides because these are important. But before I actually dive into the IT processes of COVID, let's take a look at the actual COVID cube so you get a better picture or visualization of what a COVID cube comprises of. So next, here's the COVID cube. So all of the processes that you see within this picture are basically falling in four domain areas, right? So you have the plan and organize, for example, you have the acquire and implement, you have the deliver and support, and then monitor and evaluate. So these are the higher level of the actual cube, comprised of three different processes. And each segment, by the way, has different processes. Some have seven, some have 13, some have four, and so on. Next are the COVID components. Once again, fairly straightforward, but I just wanted to run through some of these so you have a solid understanding of what the actual framework is doing and how is it helping IT security and cybersecurity framework. So the components consist of the framework itself. Here you organize and categorize your IT governance objectives and best practices by various IT domains and processes before you actually map them to the actual business outcomes. Then you have the process description. So once you have created the framework itself for your organization, then a reference process model and common language is created for everyone in the enterprise. So basically you lay out the framework and then you define the processes. Next is the control objectives. We use this to complete a set of high-level requirements for effective control for each of the IT processes. Okay, 
So once again, you have the framework, you have the process descriptions, and then you have the controls or basically processes, okay? Next is the management guidelines. So once you have these processes, you assign responsibility, agree on objectives, measure performance, use metrics, and then illustrate in a relationship with other processes. And finally, you have the maturity models, which simply assess the maturity and capability per process and helps to address gaps, if any. So during these processes, there may be areas where you may find certain gaps or certain issues that can be resolved as a continuous process methodology. Next are the COVID processes. Recall, talked about the processes earlier. Here's a breakdown of all of the processes that COVID has. So for example, they're divided into align, plan, and organize, right? Then you have the build, acquire, and implement. Then you have the deliver service and support. And finally, on the right side, you will see monitor, evaluate, and assess. So each category segment has different processes. For example, the align, plan, and organize has 13 processes, and so on. But as far as cybersecurity is concerned, there are two major processes that we are going to focus on. Okay, the first one is the APO 13, which is manage security. And the second one falls within the deliver service and support segment. And this is DSS 05, which is manage security and services. So these are the two core processes that really cater to cybersecurity. And of course, there are others as well. For example, you'll see DSS 02 is manage service incidents, right? So this is also, of course, within the uh, governance of enterprise IT, but we're gonna focus on these two just so you have greater understanding that relates more specifically to cybersecurity. Next, we'll take a look at the COVID APO 13 and DSS 05. So once again, the APO 13 is manage security. In this particular process, we define, operate, and monitor a system for information security management. Whereas simply in DSS 05, manage security services, this entails protecting the enterprise information to maintain the level of information security risk that is acceptable to the organization itself in accordance with the security policy. It also allows you to establish and maintain information security roles of different individuals within the organization who gets what access, who can do what within the network itself, right? Or within the security realm, and then perform security monitoring, have checks and balances. So these are the two main areas that relate to cybersecurity itself. Next, let's have in-depth understanding of COVID APO 13. So COVID APO 13, once again, is managing your security. So it support IT and business compliance, supporting the management of IT and enterprise risk, contributing to the transparency of IT costs and benefits, and ensuring security of information, infrastructure, and application. Now, also note that whether it's APO 13, whether it's DSS 05, most of these services or most of the points here, they are very similar. In fact, duplicates at some times because they're very closely linked together, okay? There's subtle difference between the two, for example, COVID APO 13 and DSS 05. And we'll take a look at that once we take a look at DSS 05, you'll understand the similarities between these two processes. So APO 13 provides reliable information for decision-making, and within APO 13, we have subcategories, 13.01, 13.02, and then 13.03, and so on. So the important ones are 13.01, which is establishing and maintaining the information security management system. 13.02 is define and manage a security plan, and then finally monitor and review the management system. And finally, we have the COVID DSS 05, which again is protecting the enterprise to maintain the level of security risk acceptable to the organization in lieu of the security policy. And you'll notice that some of the other areas are similar 
to APO 13, such as supporting IT and business compliance, support the management of IT and enterprise risk, ensure security of the data, information, infrastructure, and application. So in this lecture, I just wanted to cover the basics, the fundamentals of COVID-5 framework, so you have a better understanding of what that is. You're able to gain solid concept of what COVID is all about. If you have any question, post in the discussion area. I'd be happy to answer for this. Let's move to the next lesson.